in the third video, John outlines how he lost the finishing land, which is very typical of a lot of hill country properties in the last 20 years or so. With the expansion of the dairy farming, a lot of the finishing country, both in Canterbury and the rest of New Zealand, has been developed into dairy farming. So what that means is that a lot of hill country properties are having to look to finish their animals on farm. At the same time, we've had an increased fecundity and increased performance out of the ewes, so there are more animals to be trying to finish. And John starts the process of thinking about how they might do that on Inverary Station. We had this irrigated property and we sold it. It was the only way I was ever going to make money out of dairy farming by not getting up at five o'clock in the morning. So we sold it and it, was, it allowed us to put some money, quite a bit of money back into our own property and other things as well. But we all of a sudden had to reabsorb all the finishing animals that we used to send away and all the wintering animals. And that proved to be a really, really difficult task because the rules had changed. There was no money in selling store lambs. We really had to look at finishing lambs. We had developed a much higher plane of production on our ewes, and so that there were a lot more demands on it. And it was a very stressful period. And Bert, who's the manager at home, said to me one day, look, he said, I'm finding this really, really stressful. Can we talk about it? He said, my suggestion is that we reduce our U numbers. I said, my reaction is we just have to put up with what we're doing now. We're supporting it by buying and feed, putting stuff out grazing, using urea and so on. But we've got to develop our way through it. But I couldn't, I said, I can't really tell you why. I don't really understand that. I could understand you very clearly why what he was wanting. So we were at opposite ends of the fence on that. It wasn't an argument like that. It was just a philosophical difference. So I thought about it and I said to him one day, Bert, I've got an idea. I think that if we spend some time and really examine this property, pull it apart and put it back together, brick by brick, it'll give us some answers. Are you up for that? He said, yep. So we started in a very modest way some of the recording work. We, 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 we had a meeting where, I think it's um, a SWOT analysis, I think, that, I think they're called, and my wife, Bert and his wife, we were in a mutual room in Ashburton and a meeting facilitated by Chris Mulvaney. And we examined our property for the whole day. We looked at its strengths and weaknesses, and we made a list of things that we had to do and examine. So we came home and we had to examine our stock policy, which was pretty easy because we had been to the stock care program. But we had to look at our tenure, our borrowings, fertiliser program, just really re-examine this property from the bottom up. My part of it was study of a pasture. This still is a segment of the farming community that thinks that if you have to use a consultant or if you have to use scales, yeah. Not a particularly good stockman, but not many of these days. So let's just summarise where John had gotten to. He had an early experience with legumes, particularly white clover being oversown and top dressed, as a lot of our hill country was through the 50s and 60s, and a response to that, but that response had diminished. So very grass dominant pastures and some issues happening with the sale of a finishing farm. So no longer the outlet to be able to get rid of the stock off the property. And therefore, two different views, Bert's view and John's view as to what they should do. Should they destock or should they intensify? So they needed to take Inverary apart and look at what was happening. What they were looking for was a strategy. They had outstanding stock information, as a lot of farmers do. A lot of farmers have information about genetics and they have information on animal live weight and they have information on lambing, but very little data on pasture. And that was something that had to be created by John and Bert to be able to determine what to do going forward. So the next videos that we're going to look at are going to talk about how they went about that process of seeing what does the pasture resource actually deliver to their property? And is there an ability to improve that pasture resource? And therefore, which approach of either reducing stocking numbers or intensifying the farm would be the most successful for them going forward.